So we're going to go through um, through this as we would go through a real trial. And uh, we're really excited today that we have some, some jurors with us. And um, we're looking forward to, to uh, seeing what they think of the trial and who they think should win. So are lawyers ready to make appearances? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, the plaintiff would first like to make appearances for the court. Uh, my name is Isabella Zeifer, and along with my co-counsel, Lily Petey, we represent the plaintiff. Did now, oh, sorry, Your Honor, go ahead. Could you please introduce the, uh, the members of your team? Yes, of course. Um, and have them put their cameras on? Yes. Um, the name of each of our witnesses first testifying we will have anya singh who will be playing professor kai cruz um anya if you want to like wave something <laughs> um next we will have jack Rockkind uh playing shiloh pittsburgh all right and wait, oh. <laughs> hi, Jack. And next, we will have Olivia Puzio, who will be playing the role of Eli Adam in this afternoon's case. Um, at this time, we would also like to mark the witness statements of the defense witnesses. Uh, first, the witness statement of Officer Nico Reed, which starts on page 56 as P1. The witness statement of Sergeant Jamie Cato, which starts on page 59 as P2. And the witness statement of Lieutenant Tatum Barman, which starts on page 61 as P3. Okay. Any objections? No objections, Your Honor. Okay. Defense? Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Olivia Okunubitsky, and I, along with my co-counsel, Caroline Lucas, will be representing the defendant, the City of Metropolitan, in today's case. We will first be calling Sergeant Jamie Cato to the stand, who will be played by Frankie Bexon-Reed. We will next call uh, former officer Nico Reed to the stand, who will be played by Laura Altiers. And lastly, we will call Lieutenant Tatum Barman to the stand, who will be played by Joshua Kaufman, who is not here at the moment, but will be joining later. Okay, very good. And at this time, we would like to mark the witness statements of the plaintiff witnesses for impeachment purposes. Uh, so we'd like to mark the statement of Ms. Eli Adam as D1, and that starts on page 46. Professor Kai Cruz as D2 on page 51. And lastly, Mr. Shiloh Pittsburgh as D3, and that begins on page 54. Uh, anything else? Uh, Yes, Your Honor. Uh, if possible, I would like to remind the court of correction number eight, which states that since there will be no student jurors in the online competition, no reference should be made to jurors, which obviously is slightly separate for today's inter-squad search. But. Thank you. Um, is there anything else that you would like the court to know? Uh, just one note, Your Honor. We ask that time be stopped if uh, in the event of any major technical difficulties, such as uh, someone uh, freezing or being disconnected from the meet or uh, something of the sort. Okay, and we have a timekeeper. Can you uh, introduce the timekeeper, please? Yes. All right. Okay, so I think we're ready for to hear the case of Eli Adam, the estate of Nancy Adam and Kai Cruz versus the city of Metropolitan. Does the plaintiff have an opening statement that they would like to make? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Permission to proceed? Go ahead. May it please the court. Good afternoon, Your Honors and opposing counsel. My name is Lily Petey, and along with my co-counsel, Isabella Zeifer, I'm representing the plaintiffs, Miss Eli Adam, the estate of Nancy Adam, and Miss Kai Cruz in today's case. We are here today because the Metropolitan Police Department rushed to judgment and their arrests of the plaintiff. 
On the night of May 26th, 2019, Miss Adam and her good friend Kai Cruz were on the way home from a peaceful demonstration with Eli's elderly mother, Nancy Adam. As evidence will show on their drive home, Miss Adam and Miss Cruz were forced to pull over to the side of the road because of the reckless driving of Officer Wojciechowski, the chief of police. After pulling over, Officer Wojciechowski came barreling over to Miss Adam and Miss Cruz, leaving his friend, former police officer Nico Reed, in his car. He got so close that Miss Adam could smell the alcohol on his breath. Officer Wojciechowski tried to punch Miss Adam in the face, and Nancy Adam tripped, and the tomato she was holding hit Officer Wojciechowski as she fell. Miss Adam bent down to help her mother and saw Officer Wojciechowski reach for a gun strapped to his leg. Instinctively, she pushed him away from her and her mother. Meanwhile, Miss Cruz was calling for help, pleading with Officer Wojciechowski to leave her friends alone. It was during all of this that Officer Jamie Cato arrived on the scene. Miss Adam was relieved to see a uniformed police officer and tried to tell Officer Cato what had happened and to get help for her unresponsive mother. Officer Cato, however, rushed to judgment and instead arrested Eli Adam, Nancy Adam, and Kai Cruz. In this case, we, the plaintiff, have the burden of proof, which means we must prove our case by a preponderance of the evidence. In order to satisfy our burden, the evidence supporting our claim must seem in your mind more likely to be true than not. To fulfill this burden, we must prove the following aspects of this case. That Jamie Cato arrested Kai Cruz, Eli Adam, and Nancy Adam, and that Officer Jamie Cato did not have reason to believe that the plaintiffs committed any offense that warranted arrest or that the offense did not occur in Cato's presence. To do this, we will call three witnesses. First, Kai Cruz, who will testify that she used her miniature bullhorn to plead with Officer Wojciechowski and call for help. Next, we will call Shiloh Pittsburgh, who picked up Eli, Kai, and Nancy from the police station. And finally, we will call Eli Adam, who will tell you about her frightening interaction with Officer Wojciechowski, the hostile treatment of her mother, and the confusion surrounding her arrest. You will hear that Officer Cato based the arrests of Miss Adam, Nancy Adam, and Miss Cruz exclusively on the story he was told by Officer Wojciechowski and Nico Reed. Evidence will show that Officer Wojciechowski had been drinking on the night in question and that Nico Reed was under the influence of a cocktail of alcohol and prescription painkillers. After hearing the testimony presented tonight, we are confident that you will find that Jamie Cato rushed to judgment in the arrests of the plaintiff and find the Metropolitan Police Department liable of violating their civil rights. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. I just want to remind the jurors that nothing you hear in opening statements is to be considered evidence. It's just a uh, case theory. Defense? Permission to proceed, Your Honor. You may. May it please the court. Good afternoon, Your Honors and opposing counsel. For a police officer to keep their community safe, they must use their training and experience to make decisions in difficult situations. As evidence will show, this is exactly what Sergeant Jamie Cato, the late Chief of Police Nazi Wojciechowski, and Lieutenant Tatum Barman did on the night of May 26, 2019. They used their collective 44 years of experience and judgment on the force to make choices in a chaotic situation. My name is Carolina Lucas, and I, along with my co-counsel, Olivia Okendovitsky, will be representing the city of Metropolitan in today's case. Now, in this case, the plaintiffs contend to have been falsely arrested by the city of Metropolitan. However, testimony will show that all actions taken by then Officer Cato and his colleagues were measured, reasonable, and in response to the reckless and harmful actions taken by the plaintiffs. In the late evening of May 26, 2019, Police Chief Wojciechowski, better known as Mountie, 
was driving home with his friend, Nico Reed. As evidence will show, Chief Wojciechowski and Miss Reed noticed a car driving dangerously behind them. Pulling over, Chief Wojciechowski quickly called 911 to report a reckless driver. Eli Adam, that driver, with his mother in the car, then decided to stop behind the chief, and Miss Adams' best friend, Kai Cruz, stopped as well. Respondent Officer Jamie Cato then arrived to a chaotic scene. First, he heard Chief Bojachowski yell, I'm hit, and saw him covered in tomato juice from a tomato Nancy Adam had thrown. Second, he saw Eli Adam shove Chief Bojachowski resulting in the chief tumbling to the ground. And third, Officer Cato saw and heard Kai Cruz approach him, yelling derogatory terms into a bullhorn after 11 p.m. Sergeant Cato will testify as to how each of these events provided him probable cause to arrest Eli and Nancy Adam for simple assault and Kai Cruz for harassment. Next, you will hear from Nico Reed. Ms. Reed will describe her relationship with Chief Wojciechowski and the dangerous driving and anti-police bias of Eli Adams. She will also corroborate the testimony of Sergeant Cato, describing Nancy Adams throwing the tomato at Chief Wojciechowski. Finally, Lieutenant Tatum Barmond will describe his decades of experience as a mediator and police officer. Chief Wojciechowski's experience on the force and the history between Eli Adam and the Metropolitan Police Department. Testimony will also show that all of the witnesses for the plaintiff are biased to a point of unreliability through their prejudice against the police and towards Eli Adam. In this case, the burden of proof by preponderance of the evidence rests the plaintiff. Over the course of today's trial, it will become clear that the plaintiff cannot meet this burden. At the end of these proceedings, we are confident that you will find in favor of the defense. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Does the plaintiff have a witness that they would like to call? Um, yes, Your Honor. At this time, the plaintiff would like to call Kai Cruz to the stand. Okay. Um, because of the, the circumstances we're under, we will assume that all witnesses are properly sworn in at the beginning of their testimony. Please state your name for the court. My name is Kai Cruz. And what is your occupation, Ms. Cruz? I've been a professor at Metropolitan University for the past three years. What is your area of expertise? I'm an entomologist and have a passion for bugs. I used to study nocturnal bugs, but I can't anymore. Why not? I have this thing called night blindness, but that isn't really a good name for it. I'm not blind at night, I just can't see small things, and it doesn't pose any difficulty when driving either. Are you legally allowed to drive at night? Yes, I am. It... Now, how are you involved in tonight's trial? Eli Adam, her mom Nancy, and I were arrested by Officer Cato on the night of May 26, 2019. How do you know Eli Adam? Eli and I met about five years ago, and ever since then we've been good friends. I'm also currently renting a house from her. What happened on May 26 leading up to the arrest? I was at a New Marion demonstration in downtown Metropolitan with Eli and her mom. What are the New Marians? The Numerians are a group which believe in a smaller government and living a simple life. And around what time did you leave this demonstration? We left at around 11. And did you leave the demonstration alone? No, I told Eli I would follow her home because I live close to her and was worried about Nancy. Why were you worried about Nancy? Well, during the protest, she was acting strange, stumbling around a bit, laughing and talking nonsense to herself, and I had never seen her act like that before. Now, what happened after you left the demonstration? I was following Eli's car home, and it looked like she was trying to pass someone. Was Eli successful in passing this driver? No, she stopped short, and I accidentally tapped her bumper with mine. 
And what did you do after you tapped Eli's car? I got out to check if there was any damage and to make sure Nancy was okay. To the best of your knowledge, did Nancy appear all right? Physically, yes, but she seemed really confused. How so? Well, she started walking in between Eli's car and the car in front of Eli, getting closer to the other driver. And who was the driver of this other car? I later learned it was Officer Wojciechowski. Had you met Officer Wojciechowski before? No, I had not. Did you see what Nancy did next? Yes, she tripped and the tomato she was eating came flying out of her hand and landed on Officer Wojciechowski's chest, but then she kept apologizing. And what happened after Officer Wojciechowski was hit with this tomato? I saw Nancy fall and Eli ran to catch her, and I couldn't hear the conversation very clearly, but I did hear Officer Wojciechowski and Eli yelling and talking over each other. Now, what, if anything, did you see next? I saw Eli double over, kneeling on the ground. And after you saw Eli double over, did you see what, if anything, Officer Wojciechowski did? Yes, Officer Wojciechowski bent down on one knee and somehow fell. How, if in any way, did you interact with Officer Wojciechowski? I had my mini bullhorn clipped on my belt from the Numerian demonstration, so I used it to tell Officer Wojciechowski to leave Nancy and Eli alone. And why did you do that? I was scared. Officer Wojciechowski was acting so aggressively towards Nancy and Eli, so I just didn't know what else to do without escalating the situation. Did you interact with any other police officers that night? Yes, with Officer Jamie Cato. Did you see Officer Cato arrive on the scene? No. How did you realize Officer Cato was there? I was backing up from Officer Wojciechowski and Eli, and I accidentally bumped into him. Did you speak with Officer Cato at all? At the time, um, no. I tried to apologize, but I didn't get the chance. Why not? Well, Officer Cato took out a pair of handcuffs and told me to put my hands behind my back before I could. Did you know why you were being arrested? No, all I had done was tell Officer Wojciechowski to leave Nancy and Eli alone. Did you ask Officer Cato why you were being arrested? No, I didn't want to cause any trouble, so I just did what I was told and stayed quiet. At any point during this interaction, did Officer Cato say what he was arresting you for? No. Did you see Officer Cato interact with anyone else at the scene? Yes, I saw Officer Cato and Officer Wojciechowski talking to another person who I later learned was Nico Reed. Um, and uh, did you see Officer Cato interact with Eli or Nancy? Yes, Officer Cato arrested Eli and Nancy right after. And what happened after Eli and Nancy were arrested? Um, they, Officer Cato and Officer Wojciechowski began talking with Nico Reed, and I heard Nico Reed enthusiastically say that Officer Wojciechowski was always right. And what happened after this? I was taken to the police station, isolated from everyone else, and then a cop suddenly let me out and I was free to go. And throughout the entire night, were you ever asked by a police officer for your account of the events that had taken place? No. Thank you. No further questions. Cross? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Professor Cruz, you met Eli Adam five years ago at a Numerian protest, correct? Yes, it's when we became best friends. And meeting, him, and meeting her was the, quote, luckiest break of your life, correct? Of course. And Eli even pays the mortgage on the house that you currently live in, correct? I pay her monthly rent, but yes, she pays the mortgage. And Professor Cruz, you grew up with Shiloh Pickford, correct? Yes. And you stated that, quote, Shiloh would do anything to help you, correct? I know he would, yes. And now I'd like to discuss the Numerian. Professor Cruz, you are a Numerian, correct? Yes, I'm the leader of them. And an aspect of Numerian belief is that the police should receive less funding, correct? Not no funding, but slightly less funding, yes. And you said that at protest, you, quote, hurled well-deserved insults at the police, correct? 
Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Um, Your Honor, if I may, I'm going to establish the bias that Professor Cruz may have against the police. Counsel? Um, Your Honor, if I may, um, I fail to see how whether or not Professor Cruz has hurled, quote, well-deserved insults at the police is relevant to whether or not um, Officer Jamie Cato had probable cause to arrest her, which is what we're here tonight to decide. Um, Office, uh, Professor Cruz was not at a protest at the time of uh, this event occurring, and so I just failed to see how it is relevant to the facts of tonight's case. Yeah, um, Counsel, I think we're, we're getting some background information about the relationship between uh, the plaintiffs and the arresting officers, so I'm going to allow it. I will re-ask my question, and you stated that at protest, you, quote, Hold well-deserved insults at the police, correct? Nothing more, just well-deserved insults, but nothing violent or anything. And Professor Cruz, it is true that you have night blindness, correct? That's not a good name for it, considering I'm not blind at night. I just can't see small things, but that's what it's medically classified as. So that's a yes to my question, correct? Yes, but night blindness does not accurately explain the condition I have. But because of your night blindness, which is a condition that you do have, you prefer to avoid driving at night, correct? Objection, I Your Honor. Um, relevance, I fail to see whether or not Professor Cruz is able to, um, her preference of whether or not she likes to drive at night is relevant to this case. Your Honor, if I may, I'm simply trying to um, figure out how, in fact, this knife blindness affects Professor Cruz because they're not only testifying as a plaintiff, but also as an eyewitness to the events in question. And so I'm just trying to scope out um, the effect of the night blindness on Professor Cruz. Okay, I think that's fair. I'll allow the question. I will re-ask it. And because of your night blindness, you prefer to avoid driving at night, correct? I legally can, and it doesn't pose any difficulty. When I do drive, I personally would prefer not to, but I still can. It doesn't hurt, harm anybody. But again, that's the yes to my question, correct? Yes, but it doesn't pose a risk to anyone or anything. And now I'd like to talk about your arrest in question. You saw a tomato that was in Nancy's Ad Nancy Adams' hands land on Chief Jehovsky. Yes or no? It was an accident, considering she tripped and the tomato came flying out of her hand, but yes, that is what I saw. And, but at the time, you thought to yourself, quote, Mama Bear was looking out for Baby Bear. Isn't that correct? That's what I initially thought, but it really was just an accident. She would never do it on purpose. But again, that was your initial reaction to the incident, correct? It was, but my initial thought was proven wrong, because it was just an accident. Okay, and then you heard Eli Adams say, quote, first blood to Chief Ojehovsky, correct? That was just a joke to lighten up the situation, but yes, I did hear him, her say that. And then he made another joke about how police like to file for disability, correct? Yes, once again, just a joke, and you can see in her vo voice that she was joking. But I'm simply asking for what they said, and it was a joke about how police like to file for disability, correct? Yes, it was. And you've previously stated that you got out of your car to check on Nancy Adam, correct? Yes, and also to check if there was any damage done to the car. And you saw Nancy Adam almost fall, correct? Yes, but then I saw Eli ran to catch her, and she was okay. So at no point did you ever physically go check on Nancy Adam yourself? Yes or no? Objection, I, Your Honor. Um, relevance, I, again, I failed to see whether or not um, uh, Ms. Cruz went to go and check on Nancy Adam has to do with the um, facts of tonight's case. Your Honor, if I may, I'm simply trying to draw the inconsist inconsistencies about Ms. Cruz's story. As she said, she gave an explicit reason for getting out of her car, and she did not... Um, actually do what she said that she was going to and so that may have led to um the her actions that led to her arrest 
Um, I find that to be a little bit of a stretch. So I'm going to sustain the objection. And Professor Cruz, you decided to take out your bullhorn at the scene, correct? Yes, I was far away from Officer Wojciechowski and Eli and Nancy, so in, and the highway was loud, so I had to use my bullhorn to get my point across. And so you were speaking into this bullhorn, yes? Yes, I was. That's why I pulled it out. And this was all occurring late at night, correct? Yes, around 11. Thank you. No further questions. Redirect. Uh, no redirect at your time, this honor. Okay. Ms. Cruz, you may step down. Does the plaintiff have another witness that they would like to call? Yes, Your Honor. At this time, the plaintiff would like to call Shiloh Pittsburgh to the stand. Okay. Mr. Pittsburgh, consider yourself sworn in. Please state your name for the court. My name is Shiloh Pittsburgh. And Mr. Pittsburgh, why are you here today? I'm here tonight because I picked up my friends, Kai and Kai, and Eli and Nancy Adam from the police station after they were arrested on the night of May 26, 2019. Now, what is your relationship with Kai Cruz? Kai and I grew up together. And what is your relationship with Eli Adam? <clears throat> I've known Eli Adam for many years from the Numerians organization. Who are the Numerians? The Numerians are a peaceful group bent on living a simpler life, one with limited government and no corporations. This also includes less government funding for certain departments such as police. How are you involved in the Numerians? I work as a group's accountant, but I also, I also write their social media posts and upload pictures that I take to their pages as well. Do you do anything else? Yes, I also ghostwrite posts for Eli Adam. Were you writing all of Miss Adams' posts in December of 2017? Yes, including the one from the 28th, the one that said the comment in regards to police officers. What did this post say? The post said that police officers should know what it feels like to be persecuted. Why did you write that? I wrote that as a reply to an argument that got way more heated than I expected it to, but after taking time to collect myself and be able to read what I wrote, I realized posting it was a mistake and I quickly took it down, but not until someone took a screenshot and reposted it. Now moving on, what were you doing on May 26, 2019? I was at the Numerians protest with Nancy, Eli, and Kai. Did anything of note happen at the protest? No, it was just a calm demonstration, except Nancy Adam was acting a bit weird. What do you mean by that? She just looked out of it and lost. I couldn't even get her to look me in the eye or smile for a photo for that matter. And when did you leave this demonstration? I left shortly after Nancy, Eli, and Kai did, which was around 11-ish. Did anything notable happen on your drive home? Yes. When I was driving on Route 3, I saw a police car blocking the road. And what did you do in response to this police car? I pulled over. And what did you do after you pulled over? I got out of my car to see what was going on. Now, what, if anything, did you see? I saw Nancy and Eli Adam on the side of the road. Eli looked frightened, and Nancy just looked lost and confused again. Did you hear anything? Yes. I could hear Kai Cruz calling for help over her mini bullhorn. And what happened after this? All three of them were, were arrested. I could see them be put being in the cop cars, and I had to follow them back to the police station. And while you were at the police station, did you notice anything there? Yes. When I was there, I passed by Officer Wojciechowski. From what I could tell, I could smell alcohol on his breath and he was slurring his words. It seemed as if he was drunk. Did anything else happen? Yes. When I was leaving, I also heard Officer Wojciechowski talk to Officer Barman. Officer Barman said something like, let it go, Mountie. I'll make sure this doesn't look bad for us. The city doesn't have enough money for a lawsuit. 
Then they just let Nancy, Eli, and Kyle go. Thank you. No further questions. Cross. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, please proceed. Mr. Pittsburgh, you are not originally named a witness in this case, correct? No, but I was, but I later told Eli Adam I had valuable input and her attorney let me provide a statement. So I was added on a bit later. But that's a yes to my question, correct? Yes, I wasn't originally named. And you did not write your statement until one year after the incident had occurred, correct? Correct, but I still remember the events of the night that happened clearly. And Mr. Pittsburgh, you are a new Marian, correct? Correct. It's central to my to my core beliefs, and yeah, I, I put much value and hard work into it. And you serve as an accountant for the group, correct? Yes, I run the group's finances, and I also run their social media pages. And the Numerians are a group that rely on donations, correct? Well, we don't exactly rely, but we do use them as a big source of our income. And Eli Adam is a big donor of the Numerians, correct? Yes, she does donate much of her time and and money to our group to help it grow and prosper. And when Eli Adam came to you, Kai Cruz even said that she had, quote, landed a big fish or a big donor, correct? Yes, she thought that when she met Eli, she found someone that would be a loud and proud spokesperson to our cause, but that can also help us out with money. And you are also employed by Eli Adam personally, correct? Yes, she just hires me to write posts. It's not like an actual job. She's not much of a technology person, so I just write posts uh, under her name to make it look like but you she has are, presence. But you are employed by them, correct? Yes, she does. She hired me to do it. And I would like to address your role in that media aid and new marriage you were talking about earlier. You write many speeches for the group, correct? Yes, I write all their speeches and that Eli Adam would generally say. And in fact, you run, again, all social media for Eli Adam, correct? Yes, I run her Twitter account and all other posts. And like you just said, what you post generally reflects Miss Adam's views, correct? Yes, what I post generally sounds like something she did, but since I was in an argument that time, I that post that I wrote reflected my views. Um, hers. Professor Pittsburgh, I was simply asking if what you generally post, which you stated, um, reflect Eli Adams' views, yes or no? Generally, yes, but not that one specific post. And okay, so in so this so your role for Miss Adam includes, like you said, ghostwriting posts for them, correct? Yes, I write all of her posts. And on December 28th of 2017, you wrote, quote, police officers should know what it's like to be persecuted, correct? Yes, as a reply to another argument. Thank you. No further questions. Redirect. Um, no redirect at your time, this honor. Mr. Pittsburgh, you may step down. Does the plaintiff have another witness that they would like to call? Uh, yes, Your Honor. At this time, um, the plaintiff would like to call Miss Eli Adam to the stand. Uh, Ms. Adam, consider yourself sworn in. Permission to proceed, Your Honor? You may proceed. Please state your name for the court. My name is Eli Adam. And why are you here today? I believe my mom, Nancy, my best friend, Kai, and I were all wrongfully arrested on the night of May 26, 2019. Is your mother here in court this afternoon? No. Unfortunately, my mom suffered a stroke and passed away on October 1, 2019. Now, what is your relationship with Kai Cruz? Me and Kai met about five years ago, and we've been best friends ever since. Now, what were you doing prior to your encounter with Officer Wojciechowski on the night of May 26, 2019? I was driving home from a Numerian demonstration I had attended earlier that day. And was anyone with you? Yes, my mom was in the passenger seat of my car and Kai was following me in her car. Was there anything noteworthy about your drive home? 
Yes. While I was driving down Route 3, I got stuck behind a Ford Explorer that was driving extremely slowly and swerving all over the roads, driving overall erratically. And what, if anything, did you do in response to this car? I tried to pass the car multiple times, but it wouldn't let me. So I made I made a courtesy beep and flashed a peace sign out the window just to show that I meant no offense. And what happened next? I tried to pass the car one last time, and just as I was about to, the driver slammed on the brakes and came to a full and sudden stop. And what did you do in response to this? Well, I was three car lengths away, so I had time to stop safely, but Kai wasn't so lucky and she ended up tapping my bumper. So we both pulled over and got out of our cars to see if there was any damage. And did you do anything before getting out of the car? Yes, I put a Guy Fox mask on. Why did you put a Guy Fox mask on? Well, I didn't really want to be recognized and it's also an inside joke between Kai and me. Now, was your car damaged? I didn't get a chance to check. Why not? Immediately after I got out of my car, I saw a look of fear on Kai's face, and when I turned around to see what she was looking at, there was a giant man barreling towards us. Uh, Your Honor, at this time we would like to remind the court of Stipulation 4, which states that Officer Wojciechowski was six feet and six inches tall. Uh, Now, did you know who this man now, did you know who this man was? Not at the time, but I later found out it was Officer Wojciechowski. And what was Officer Wojciechowski doing? He had an angry look on his face and was saying that I'd been tailgating him, and he got so close to me that I could smell alcohol in his breath. And what did you do after this? Well, I noticed my mom had gotten out of my car, and she looked really unsteady, so I tried to get to her so I could help. And were you able to get to your mother to help her? Yes, but it was difficult, and she still tripped forward amidst all of the commotion going on. Why was it difficult to get to your mother? Officer Wojciechowski was blocking my path and putting his finger in my face, calling me a crackpot numerian. Now, did anything happen when your mother tripped? Yes. She was holding a tomato, and when she tripped, it accidentally flew out of her hand and landed on Officer Wojciechowski's chest. Miss Adam, why did your mother have a tomato? Ever since my mom's dementia started to get bad, uh, she had a habit of eating tomatoes whole. Now, what was Officer Wojciechowski's reaction to this tomato landing on him? He started yelling that he was a police officer, and I made a stupid joke to try and lighten up the situation, which made him even more furious. Then he tried to punch me in the face, but luckily he missed, and he just knocked off my mask. Now, what happened next? My mom had fallen on the ground, so I immediately rushed to my knees to help her, and I was repeatedly asking her if she was okay, but she was completely unresponsive. And what, if anything, was Officer Wojciechowski's response to your mother's fall? Officer Wojciechowski knelt down next to me and began pulling up his pant leg where I saw he had a gun in his ankle holster. And Your Honor, what... after Rule 403, any testimony uh, involving an alleged gun is more prejudicial than probative. Uh, this gun, uh, no shots were ever fired at the time of the incident, and Ms. Adam is not claiming self-defense in this afternoon's case, so I simply don't see the probative value. Uh, This has no relation to whether Sergeant Jamie Cato uh, had probable cause to arrest Ms. Adam. Uh, Your Honor, if I may, although no shots were ever fired from this gun, um, as Ms. Adam will tell later on uh, in her testimony, if she's allowed to continue, that she was absolutely terrified for her mother and for herself and for her safety as a result of Officer Wojciechowski's previously troubling behavior and the addition of uh, the presence of this gun on the, on the scene. Your Honor, if I may respond. Uh, again, I simply don't see the probative value of uh, Ms. Adams' attentions and why she shoved Chief Wojciechowski. We're here to decide what Sergeant Cato was aware of before he had a uh, probable cause to make these arrests. And again, this is deeply prejudicial, I believe, used to prejudice the court against the defense. Your Honor, if I may, uh, I believe that attempting to understand why Miss Adam tried to uh, push Officer Wojciechowski is extremely probative um, in this case, as 
um, part of the definition of simple assault is um, attempting to purposefully, recklessly, or intentionally harm someone. And if this testimony is allowed to continue, it will be shown that uh, Miss Adam intended to do nothing of the sort. Okay, I'm going to overrule the objection, but I will take it under consideration. And uh, if you feel that the objection um, can be raised at a later time, I welcome you to do that. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Miss Adam, uh, what, if anything, was Officer Wojciechowski's response to your mother's fall? Officer Wojciechowski also knelt down next to me, and when I looked over to see what he was doing, I saw him pull up his pant leg and grab for uh, what looked like a gun that was located in his ankle holster. And what, if anything, did you do next? I pushed him out of instinct. I didn't know what else to do. My mom was lying unresponsive on the floor, and I was terrified. Now, what happened after you pushed Officer Wojciechowski? He fell down, but I really don't know how. He was a huge man, and I really didn't push him hard. And after he fell, what happened? That's when I saw Officer Cato arrive at the scene, and I immediately tried to get his attention and tell him my mom needed help, but he ignored me and rushed to Officer Wojciechowski's side. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, mischaracterization of evidence. Uh, the witness has testified that that was when Sergeant Cato arrived at the scene, but in her affidavit it says that that was when she noticed Sergeant Cato at the scene. And as a, a big portion of what we're discussing tonight has to do with whether these events occurred in Sergeant Cato's presence, I find that this is a blatant mischaracterization of evidence. Your Honor, if I may, I believe what my witness said was that that was when she saw Officer Cato. She's um, by no means trying to testify as to when Officer Cato himself arrived on the scene. She is testifying to when she noticed Officer Cato. Okay, what was the question again? Uh, the question was, after Officer Wojciechowski fell, what happened? Okay, well, and, um, can we... And, um, and the witness responded by saying that that was when she noticed Officer Cato and tried to get his attention. Your Honor, if I may, that's not what the witness said. The witness said that that was when she noticed Sergeant Cato arrive at the scene. Okay. Uh, normally, we would have a court reporter who would read this back to us, but we are going to uh, we are going to uh, strike the part that the witness may or may not have said, if indeed she said it. So. Um, why don't you ask the question again? And the witness should be careful uh, with her reply. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Miss Adam, after Officer Wojciechowski fell, what happened? That's when I saw Officer Cato, and I immediately tried to get his attention and tell him that my mom really needed help, but he ignored me and, like I said, immediately rushed to Officer Wojciechowski's side. And did Officer Cato speak to you about what had happened? No, all of a sudden he was handcuffing me and my mom, who was still frightened and clearly distressed with zip ties. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Cross? Yes, Your Honor. Permission to proceed? You may proceed. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Adam. I want to start by talking about your medical history. Is it correct that you were diagnosed with intermittent explosive disorder in 2017? I was, yes. And this diagnosis was made by a medical professional, right? It was made by the therapist I was seeing at the time. And you have a previous criminal history because of an anger-related incident, correct? Objection, Your Honor. Um, this is uh, an unfair use of character evidence. Um, the attempt of trying to prove, uh, of trying to use uh, prior wrongs, crimes, or misdoings to demonstrate a pattern of character is inadmissible within the New Jersey um, mock trial rules of law. Your Honor, if I may respond. You may. Uh, there are two key exceptions to character evidence that I believe are both applicable here. First, under Rule 404C, evidence of a person's character is admissible when that character is an element of a claim or defense. And it is a part of the defense's theory of the case that on the night in question, Ms. Adams' anger issues were in full display, and Sergeant Cato based his arrest off of Ms. Adams' anger problem-induced and unwanted actions. And secondly, Rule 406 makes character evidence admissible to prove that on a particular occasion, the person acted in accordance with a habit or routine practice. And considering, as Ms. Adam just testified, she was uh, she had a medical diagnosis made professional, she must have had a pattern of anger problem use actions. And defense claims that these patterns emerged on May 26, 2019. 
Your Honor, if I may, to respond to both of the points that opposing counsel brought up, uh, we are here to we are here today to determine whether or not Officer Cato had probable cause um, to arrest uh, Miss Adam and the other plaintiffs. Now, Officer Cato could have had no possible way of knowing that Miss Adam had intermittent explosive disorder. Uh, therefore, while therefore uh, this does not apply. Now, secondly, to uh, in response to opposing counsel's uh, second exception. Uh, in the use of habit, routine, or practice uh, to attempt to uh, categorize uh, one's medical history as a habit or practice. Ms. Adam has never stated that she had a history of anger-related incidents. She, uh, this diagnosis for intermittent explosive disorder happened after one particular incident. Uh, the court has no knowledge of any prior incidents of Ms. Adams' alleged anger issues. Uh, therefore, this, uh, this attempt to characterize her medical history as a habit or a practice is uh, just not accurate. Your Honor, if I may respond. You may. Uh, as to opposing counsel's uh, first point, the defense is in no way trying to claim that Sergeant Cato would have knowledge of Ms. Adams' uh, medical history, what she had been previously diagnosed with. Uh, this line of questioning simply goes to show how Ms. Adam might have acted on the night of question in accordance with these previous behaviors. And as to opposing counsel's second point, uh, that this was not a habit. In uh, Firstly, she testified that this was a diagnosis made by a medical professional. And secondly, in her affidavit, I'm looking on page 46, uh, it says, I realized that I had become more and more quick to anger and less and less able to control my temper. This is not referring to one particular incident. This is referring to a pattern, which is what the defense is trying to prove to me. Okay, I'm sure I'm a bit curious about where this is leading. So let's find out. I will re-ask the question. Uh, Ms. Adam, you have a previous criminal history because of an anger-related incident, is that correct? Well, I wouldn't go so far as to call it a history. There was only one incident. But you do have a previous criminal record, right? Again, only one incident, yes. And Your Honor, at this time, I would like to renew my character evidence objection specifically pertaining to the use of crimes, wrongs, or other acts. Uh, evidence of a crime, wrong, or other act is not admissible to prove that on a particular occasion, uh, this witness may have acted therewith, uh, in accordance therewith, the same trait um, exhibited in this uh, criminal record. Counsel, this sounds uh, very convincing. Uh, can you explain why this should be allowed? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I would refer simply to the same exceptions that I mentioned earlier. Uh, under Rule 404C, this uh, sort of evidence is allowed when uh, it's a central part of a defense's uh, claim, which it is. And then secondly, again, we've already established that this is a habit. So that's another exception, Rule 406, that I believe is applicable here. We're, we're talking about one incident, aren't we? Uh, yes, we are. But again, this is a part of a habit, simply an example that I'm giving because it's mentioned in the witness's affidavit. Um, I'm having a hard time seeing this as, as a habit. I think your stronger argument is the first one. Um, but I'm I am going to allow it, but with a great deal of skepticism. So please continue. Now, Ms. Adam, this incident involved uh, someone recording you and you getting angry at them for doing so, correct? Yes, that's what happened. And you went to therapy and received medication to mitigate the effects of your anger disorder, right? I went to see a therapist and she prescribed me antidepressants that were supposed to help, but they also gave me intense side effects like migraines and stuff. But just to clarify, they did help with your IED, these medications, correct? Um, I would say they were a little bit helpful, but there was also really intense side effects. Like I said, terrible migraines. And so because of these side effects, you stopped taking your prescribed medication, right? Well, I didn't stop being medicated. I got off of the prescription medication, but I switched to another form of treatment. So that's a yes to my question. You stopped taking this prescription medication, right? Yes, but I was still being treated. All right, Ms. Adam, let's talk more about your relationship with the Numerians. You first met Professor Cruz when she accosted you about Numerian beliefs, right? She was handing out flyers and super passionate about what she was saying, yes. And you and Professor Cruz are best friends, right? Yes, we are, that's true. And she'll be paying you a monthly mortgage payment for the next 28 years, isn't that correct? 
she lives in my guest house and pays me monthly. And yes, it'll be about 28 years when she fully pays off the house. And Miss Adam, you've stated in the past, who wouldn't lie for the best friend, haven't you? Strictly in reference to Officer Wojciechowski and Nico Reed, yes, I did say that in my statement. Miss Adam, I'm not asking for context. I'm simply having asking you, have you previously stated who wouldn't lie for their best friend? Uh, objection, Your Honor, more prejudicial than probative. Uh, opposing counsel's attempt to claim that my witness said this and said this broadly when this is clearly not the case she just explained is an attempt to prejudice the court against my witness. Yeah, uh, when counsel says she doesn't care about context, that's a problem. So I'm going to sustain the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll move on. And Ms. Adam, you are the main benefactor for the Metropolitan Branch of the Numerians, right? I do provide numerous donations, yes. And on the night of May 26th, you were driving home from a Numerian protest and got mad at the driver in front of you, right? I'll admit I got a little bit frustrated, but I made sure that I was completely calm before I got out of my car or talked to anybody. And it's true that you previously stated that Chief Wojcicki slammed on his brakes, correct? Uh, yes, he did. That's why Kai ended up tapping my bumper. And this slamming is what caused you to get out of your car to check for damage, right? Well, it's what caused me to stop and then Kai to bump into my bumper, and that's what caused me to get out so I could check the damage, yes. And once you got out of your car and spoke with Chief Wojcicki, a tomato that your mother had ended up splattered on Chief Wojcicki, correct? Accidentally, because my mother tripped, yes. And after this happened, you used the term first blood to describe the incident, right? I made it very clear that it was a joke, but yes, those are some of the words that I said. And you stated that you believe Chief Wojcicki had a gun, right? I know he had a gun. I saw it. In and that you never attack a man with a gun, correct? No, I would never attack a man with a gun. But you shoved Chief Wojcicki while asking him why he'd upset an old woman, isn't that correct? Officer Wojciechowski was a huge man, and there's no way that I could have had enough force to push him over, but yes, I did push him. And you shoved him, right? Yes. Again, he had a gun and I was afraid that he was going to hurt my mother, who was already lying unresponsive on the floor. But Ms. Adam, you never saw Chief Wojcicki's hand touch the gun you alleged he had, did you? Well, if I hadn't pushed him, he might have. And Chief Wojcicki fell down right after you shoved him, correct? I don't know how. Again, I really didn't push him hard and he was a huge man, but yes, somehow he fell down. And right after Chief Wojcicki fell down, covered in dust and tomato juice, you noticed Sergeant Cato behind you, correct? Yes, that's when I noticed he was there. And you were then arrested by Sergeant Cato for what you later learned to be simple assault, right? He handcuffed me and my mom with zip ties, yes. And then at the station, we found out that it was because we were arrested for assault. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Redirect. I'll redirect your honor at this time the uh plaintiff rests okay thank you uh defense you have a witness you'd like to call yes your honor the defense would like to call sergeant jamie cato to the stand okay uh sergeant cato consider yourself sworn in permission to proceed you may please state your name and occupation for the court I'm Sergeant Jamie Cato of the Metropolitan Police Department. And what is your experience on the police force? Well, I've been on the Metropolitan Police Force for over four years. Um, I've worked harder and longer hours than anyone else, and I believe that that's been reflected in my promotion and recognition within the department. And what is your relation to today's case, Sergeant Cato? I was the on-duty officer. Uh, that responded to Police Chief Mounty Wojciechowski's uh, call for assistance regarding an aggressive driver on the night of May 26th, 2019. And where were you posted during the day of the 26th? I spent much of the day keeping uh, the peace at the Numerian protests that were being staged downtown. Uh, to those, I brought all of my standard gear, including uh, some zip ties and a body camera, the zip ties just for the unlikely event in which I might have to arrest more than one person. And was any footage of your interactions that night recorded through your body camera? Uh, unfortunately, none was as my camera began to malfunction on the night of the 26th. And did you replace the malfunctioning body camera? 
Uh, I didn't because I felt that the city would be better protected if I were to actively uh, protect it rather than just run back and forth to and from the police station uh, trying to get a better camera. Now, Sergeant Kato, you mentioned a 911 call from Chief Wojciechowski about an aggressive driver. How did you respond to this call? Well, to this call, uh, I responded to it by uh, traveling to the scene and I parked uh, the scene. I turned on my overhead flashing lights to alert anyone in the vicinity to the presence of an officer. Uh, I then got out. And what did you first notice upon exiting your vehicle? Well, I immediately saw two people who I now know to be Eli and Nancy Adam. And I also saw uh, the chief. He had a large red splatter on his chest uh, and I heard him shout, I'm hit. And did he do anything next? Uh, well, I, I soon saw uh, Eli Adam outstretch his arm towards the chief. And not a moment later, I saw the I saw Chief Wojciechowski just clatter to the ground. And what happened immediately after you saw Chief Wojciechowski fall? Uh, well, I next noticed Miss Cruz, uh, another new Marion at the scene of the incident. Uh, she was using a bullhorn and s screaming insults through at it. She called us dirty cops and she called me an establishment stooge. And Sergeant Cato, did you make any arrests at the scene of the incident? I made three, Eli and Nancy Adam for simple assault and Kai Cruz for harassment. And what is necessary for a police officer to make an arrest for a simple assault or harassment? A police officer must have probable cause to believe that the assault or harassment happened, uh, and it also must have happened in their presence. And Sergeant Cato, what does probable cause require? A uh, probable cause requires a police officer to have a good reason to believe that uh, the assault or crime uh, actually happened. And can you define simple assault for the court? Simple assault is purposefully or recklessly attempting to cause or causing a bodily injury or harm to another. And what information did you use to arrest Miss Adam, Miss Eli Adam, for assault? Uh, to arrest Miss Adam, I used the fact uh, that I saw her approach the chief, or I saw her extend her arm rather to the chief, and I saw the chief just fall to the ground uh, immediately after. And what information did you use to arrest Nancy Adam for simple assault? Uh, to arrest Nancy Adam for simple assault, I used the fact that I saw the chief covered in tomato juice. Uh, I heard him, uh, and I heard him shout, I'm hit, which actually led me to believe that the projectile had been thrown purposefully. And Sergeant Cato, can you please define harassment for the court? Uh, a person employs harassment or a person commits harassment if they purposefully employ offensive, coarse or loud language in a manner likely to cause annoyance or alarm for another and or at an extremely inconvenient hour. And Sergeant Cato, what information did you use to arrest Professor Kai Cruz for harassment? To arrest Kai Cruz for harassment, I used the fact that I was a witness to her screaming through a bullhorn insults at an extremely inconvenient hour. And what did you do directly after arresting the three plaintiffs? Um, upon uh, arresting them, I transported Eli Adam back to the police station in my patrol car. And what did you do upon arriving at the station? I began to uh, draft the warrant complaints, but before I could finish them, uh, I was told by the police chief that I should rather just uh, file them instead as summonses and let the arrestees go for the night. And did you ultimately file these summonses? Uh, I didn't because uh, Lieutenant Tate and Barman, also my superior, told me uh, to drop them altogether and not to file a report on the matter either. And lastly, Sergeant Cato, did you ask why you were told to drop the charges against the plaintiffs? I didn't because I simply don't decide uh, what is or what isn't written up. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Cross? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Permission to proceed? You may proceed. Now, you are currently a sergeant on the Metropolitan Police Force, correct? Uh, that is currently my position. 
And you have only been on the force for four years, correct? Um, I have been on the force for four years. And you state in your affidavit that this is a very impressive position for someone who's been on the force for only four years, correct? It is, and I worked my way here from the bottom up. And you were promoted to the rank of sergeant in July of 2019, correct? That was when my efforts were recognized, yes. And you credit your advancement on the force to your statistical record as a patrol officer, correct? Objection well, to relevance. Uh, I believe that opposing counsel is trying to prove that Sergeant Cato uh, arrested the plaintiffs so that he could get this promotion and get more arrests for his record. Uh, but in the jury charge, I'm looking right now on page 42, it says that uh, Sergeant Jamie Cato's motivation to arrest the plaintiffs is irrelevant. Your Honor, if I may respond, I am not arguing for uh, Sergeant Cato's motivations in arresting the plaintiff, but I am simply establishing that Sergeant Cato has um, has an abundance of experience in making arrests and handing out tickets, so much so that it has led to his advancement on the force. Um, I believe it's the defense's theory to look into the experience of the the three officers, so I'm going to let this go. Uh, Sergeant Cato, I shall repeat my question. You credit your advancement on the force to your statistical record as a patrol officer, correct? My statistical record is simply a byproduct of the good service that I've done over those four years, but that is what uh, uh, the pen pushers tend to care about, and that is what eventually got me my promotion. Sorry. And you gave out more tickets than anyone else on the force. Is that correct? Um, as a result of my longer uh, hours and uh, harder working, uh, yes, that is that is correct. And you have the most <laughs> you have the most arrests out of anyone on the force in four years. Correct. Over a four year period, I did manage to achieve that, uh, not intentionally, of course, but it was something that I did inadvertently achieve. And it is Metropolitan Standard Procedure to file a narrative police report after making an arrest, correct? Uh, it is. And on the night of May 26, 2019, after you arrested Eli Adam, Nancy Adam and Kai Cruz, you did not end up filing a narrative police report, correct? Well, as I was instructed by a superior of mine, um, I did not do so. And so you were drafting warrant complaints when Chief Wojciechowski told you to redo these complaints as a summons, correct? Uh, yes, I was informed by the chief that he would, uh, that it would be preferable to file them as summonses, as they would be more, um, they would be more relevant of a, uh, of a procedure to uh, take. But you don't state this in your affidavit, correct? Uh, no, that's not exactly what I said, I don't believe. And now you did as Chief Wojciechowski told you to, correct? Of course, he was the chief of police. I really didn't have any other choice. But before you could even file these summonses, you were told by Lieutenant Barman not to file any complaints at all, correct? Uh, that was what uh, Lieutenant Barman told me to do. And then he even told you to not even file a narrative police report, correct? Uh, that was another directive that he issued uh, to me. And you did as Lieutenant Barman told you to, correct? Uh, and on the police force, it's really not a question of choice when it comes to obeying superiors. That's how we get things done. So that's a yes to my question? Yes, it is. Now let's go back to the scene of the incident. You were the first officer on the scene responding to Officer Wojciechowski's 911 call, correct? That is correct. And you did not verbally announce yourself as a police officer on the scene, correct? Objection on irrelevance. Um, I simply don't see how whether or not uh, Sergeant Cato verbally announced himself not, uh, is relevant to what we're here tonight to discuss. And Sergeant Cato has already testified to the fact that he left his overhead lights on to notify anyone in the vicinity uh, to the presence of a police officer. So I don't see whether he did it verbally or non-verbally is relevant at all. 
Your Honor, if I may respond, it is the it is a reasonable action of a police officer responding to a scene to verbally announce themselves as a police officer. And uh, this line of questioning goes to show that perhaps that op that Sergeant Cato was not acting as a reasonable police officer on the night in question. I'm going to overrule the objection. I'll repeat my question, Sergeant Cato. You did not verbally announce yourself as a police officer on the scene, correct? I would argue that I did announce myself by turning on my overhead police lights, um, albeit not verbally. And you also state in your affidavit that you had been, quote, all ready to arrest Numerians that day, correct? Um, I was referring to the protests, and what I meant was that I was simply well equipped to dispense uh, or do my duties that day. But this is what you stated in your affidavit, correct? Uh, yes, I did say that. And you noticed that Eli Adam, Nancy Adam, and Kai Cruz were all wearing New Marion t-shirts upon your arrival to the scene, correct? Uh, that was one of the observations that I did make at the scene. Now, when you were at the scene, you did not see anyone throw anything at Officer Wojciechowski, correct? I didn't see anything launched. I didn't see anything fly through the air, if that's what you mean. And, in fact, you were not even aware that anything had been thrown in the first place until you spoke with Nico Reed and Officer Wojciechowski after the fact, correct? I was approached by them, and they did happen to tell me that uh, the chief had been assaulted with a tomato. And you were told by Nico Reed and Officer Wojciechowski that both Nancy Adam and Eli Adam had thrown tomatoes, correct? Uh, they may have told me that, but I did not uh, arrest. I mean, it wasn't really relevant in my arrest of Eli Adam. So. But it was relevant in your arrest of Nancy Adam. Well, uh, I had reasonable to I had reason to believe that she had committed uh, that that she had committed that offense from what I gathered at the scene and also from what I was told by eyewitnesses. And these eyewitnesses were Nico Reed and Officer Wojciechowski, correct? Yes, they they were eyewitnesses. And. In regards to the arrest of Eli Adam, you did not see anybody physically touch Officer Wojciechowski, correct? Um, I believe I saw the interaction. I didn't have a direct line of sight to one person's arms or the other, but I had enough to know that it happened in my presence. But you didn't, at any point, you did not see Eli Adam make physical contact with Officer Wojciechowski, correct? Well, as I said before, I didn't have a direct line of sight to exactly uh, the intricacies of what they were doing. I'm simply asking if you saw Eli Adam make physical contact with Officer Wojciechowski, yes or no? Uh, no, I, I didn't. And you didn't even speak to Eli Adam before you arrested her, correct? Uh, it would not be standard operating procedure to have a chat with anyone that we might arrest, especially not if the arrest might be of the uh, violent nature. And you didn't even speak to Nancy Adam before you made the arrest either. Once again, it would not be required. We're going to stop right here. We're out of time. The Your Honor, you're muted. Uh, redirect. No redirect, Your Honor. Okay. Sergeant, you may step down. Uh, Counsel, do you have another witness you would like to call? Yes, Your Honor. At this time, the defense calls Ms. Nika Reed to stand. Okay. I'll consider yourself sworn in. You may proceed. Please state your name for the court. My name is Nika Reed. And what is your occupation, Ms. Reed? I'm a muscle car mechanic full-time. However, I'm also a retired police officer for the Metropolitan County Police Force. How are you involved in today's case? On Sunday, May 26, 2019, I was in the car with Mounty Wojciechowski when the incident occurred. And who was Mounty Wojciechowski? 
He was the chief of police and he loved mountain climbing, which we did together often. So what was your relationship to Chief Ojehovski? We were very close. When I decided to apply to join the police force, Mountie was instrumental in the way that he guided me through the application process. He was like my second father and he was driving me home that night. And where was Chief Ojehovski driving you home from? Mountie was driving me home from a fundraiser for adoption that we were at together with the police force at a bar. And did you or Chief Ojehovski have any alcoholic drinks at the fundraiser? Mountie and I each had one alcoholic drink the whole night that we were there. And so why was Chief Ojehovski driving you home? Well, I was physically unable to drive due to the injuries I had sustained while slipping off a boulder a month before. I had my right arm in a cast, which was in a sling, and had a neck brace on. And what car was Chief Ojehovski driving that night? Mountie was driving his Ford Explorer, or really a Ford Police Interceptor Utility. It was purple and proudly had a support police license plate frame on the back. And did Chief Ojehovski ever stop on your way home? Yes, while we were on Route 3. And why is that? There was a Mini Cooper that was driving dangerously behind us. It kept flashing its headlights at us and kept honking, even though Mountie was driving the speed limit. What was the chief's reaction to this? He was so upset because of the aggressive driver behind us that he decided to pull over. In that situation, it seems like the safest choice for everyone involved. Um, he could calm down and the driver behind us could pass. So did he pull over? Yes, he pulled over and then he called 911 to report the aggressive driver. He then did the mindfulness breathing exercises that we learned in a workshop we took together to calm down. And after he called 911 and calmed down, what did Chief Ojehovski do? He stepped out of the car. And what did you do when the chief got out of the car? I opened my car door slightly, but hesitated to get out given my injuries. How, if at all, were you able to see what happened next from inside the car? I was able to see through my rear view mirror and my passenger side mirror um, because my car door was only open slightly. So what did you see of the incident? Well, first I saw Eli Adam come out of the Cooper slamming her car door. And what happened immediately after Eli Adam got out of her car? She ran over to Mountie screaming that he nearly killed her and her poor mother. She then told Mountie that her family was well-respected and that he didn't know who he was messing with. Eli also called Mountie a fascist pig. Was there anyone else at the scene besides Chief Ojehovski yourself and the person later identified as Eli Adams? Yes, there was another driver there, Kai Cruz, who said that she'd hit Eli's car. I also saw the person later identified as Nancy Adam. And at any point, did you hear or see Nancy Adam do anything? Yes. At one point, I saw Nancy duck into the car and come out with a tomato in her hands looking angry. She threw it at Mountie and it landed on his chest, making a stain. And after Nancy threw the tomato, did anything else happen? Yes. Eli then chuckled and said, we drew first blood. You will end up on disability. What were you doing when you saw and heard these things? I would finally finished getting out of the car to try and help Mountie, although I don't know why I thought I could help um, because of my injuries. And did you notice anything else when you stepped out of your car? Yes, I saw that Kato was on the scene. And did you interact with Sergeant Kato at all? Yes, Mountie and I filled him in on what had happened. Thank you, no further questions. Cross? Yes, Your Honor. Permission to proceed? You may proceed. Now, Officer Wojciechowski was like a, quote, second father to you, right? Yes, we were very close. And you've said that Officer Wojciechowski was, quote, instrumental to getting you your position as an officer on the Metropolitan Police Force, right? He was instrumental in the way that he guided me through the application process. But you don't say that last part in your affidavit, right? That he was instrumental? I did say that he was instrumental in my affidavit. But you don't say in, in what specific capacity he was instrumental in your affidavit, right? No. 
Now, I'd like to talk about uh, the night of the incident. Prior to your encounter with Eli Adam, you were at a fundraiser, right? Yeah, it was a fundraiser for adoption. And you didn't drive yourself to the fundraiser that night, right? No, I was physically unable to. And you were physically unable to because you were in an arm cast, a sling, and a neck brace, right? Yes. And you say that these injuries forced you to leave your job on the police force, right? They did cause me to retire early. And on the night of May 26, 2019, you were taking pain medication, right? For my injuries, I was. And this wasn't just any pain medication. It was a prescription strength muscle relaxer, right? Yes. And you were also drinking alcohol on the night of May 26, 2019, right? I did have one drink the whole night that I was at the fundraiser. But you don't say that you only had one drink in your affidavit, right? Well, no. And you do say in your affidavit that the combination of the prescription strength muscle relaxers and the alcohol that you had made you feel, quote, woozy, right? I did feel woozy when I was at the fundraiser. Now, you say that you saw almost everything that occurred between the plaintiffs and Officer Wojciechowski that night, right? I did see everything, yes. So, uh, just to be clear, you saw this when you exited the car? Is, is that right? No. I saw it through my rearview mirror and my passenger side mirror because my car door was only open slightly. So, uh, you're telling the court that the only view you had of these incidents was from a the rear view and side view mirrors, right? Yes. And the back window of that car was dusty, right? Well, I did notice that it was a bit dusty when I had gotten home that night when I was examining the back of the car, but I hadn't noticed before when I was inside the car. But it was dusty enough that someone had written clean me in the dust on the back of the window, right? Yes, that person was behind the car, which is when I also noticed the dust, but it wasn't barely noticeable when you were inside the car. Now, you already said that you were feeling woozy from the combined effect of the alcohol and your prescription strength muscle relaxers, right? I was feeling woozy when I was at the fundraiser, but when we left early and got on the road, I started to feel better. But you don't say that you were feeling better in your affidavit, right? Well, no, but I, yeah. Now, uh, you said on direct that you filled Officer Cato in on everything that had happened. Is that right? I did. And he didn't ask you to tell him what had happened, right? No, but Mountie and I decided it would be best to fill him in. So you told him what you had seen, right? Yes. And what you had heard, right? Yes. Now, you claim to have heard Eli Adam call Officer Wojciechowski a fascist pig, right? I did hear Eli call him that. But you don't include this in your original affidavit, right? No. You only added this in an original supplement to your affidavit, isn't that right? Yes, I did add it in my supplement. And isn't it true that you only wrote this edition after Officer Wojciechowski's death? Yes, which happened a few months after I'd written the original affidavit. So to... So it's now, to the best of your knowledge, Officer Wojciechowski was known to carry a handgun strapped to his calf under his pants, right? Generally, he did carry the gun when he was on duty. But you don't say that he only carried it on duty in your affidavit, right? Well, no, but he did generally carry it. You don't, and you don't specify in your affidavit when he carried this gun, right? No. Now, to the best of your knowledge, Officer Wojciechowski was not physically injured by anything that occurred um, on the night of May 26, 2019, right? Well, I don't think he was diagnosed with any injuries, but I don't know if he was in any pain. But he never told you of any pain, right? Not that I knew of, but he could have been that he didn't tell me. And as far as you know, the effects of the events that had happened that night were that his shirt was stained with tomatoes and his pants were dusty, right? That's as far as he told me. And that's as far as you saw, right? From what I saw, but he wasn't diagnosed with any injuries, but he could have been in other pain. Uh, move to strike the last part of that witness's answer is speculation. Everything starting from, but he could have been in pain. We have no way of knowing, and the witness is purely speculating. Um, Your Honor, I, if I may. Yes. Oh. Go ahead. I was 
I was just going to say that um, this is my witness's perception of what had happened. And their perception was that they could have, that Chief Wojciechowski could have or could not have been injured, which is exactly what they just said. Okay, I believe the, the witness was uh, talking about whether the officer, the chief of police was in pain. Was there anything that the witness saw that would indicate that the chief was in pain or heard? Well, Your Honor, um, Ms. Reed did see that the tomato was thrown at Chief Wojciechowski, and Chief, but Chief Wojciechowski Bojahosi did not inform her of any injuries that she had, but so therefore she really wouldn't be able to know um, whether or not it had occurred. But from what she saw, she knew that it could have occurred. Okay, I'm I'm going to uh, to strike that from the record. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Ms. Reed, just to clarify, Officer Bojahosi sustained no injuries to his physical body on the night of May 26, 2019, right? Not that I know of. Thank you, no further questions. Redirect. No, Your Honor. Okay, you may step down. Does the defense have a witness that they would like to call? Yes, Your Honor, the defense would like to call Lieutenant Tatum Barman to the stand. Lieutenant Barman, consider yourself sworn in. You may proceed. Please state your name and occupation for the court. I'm Lieutenant Tatum Barman of the Metropolitan Police Department. And what experience do you have on the police force? I have been on the police department for over 25 years with official experience as a crime scene reconstructionist. And what is your relation to today's case? Well, I was the lead officer on the case involving the incident between Chief Marcin Mount Wojciechowski and the Adams. And are you aware of what experience Chief Wojciechowski had on the police force? Yes, yes, I am. He was on the force since 2005 and was the chief of police until his death. And why are you the lead officer for this incident? Well, I have over 25 years of experience as a mediator and as an officer of the law. Lieutenant Berman, were you familiar with Eli Adam before you were called to the scene on May 26, 2019? Yes, yes, I was. And how were you familiar with her? We knew each other a little bit as a majority of my family had worked for an Adam business at some point in their lives. And I was a frequent guest at his events and parties and whatnot. And I was usually entitled to bring guests. For example, I actually brought Mountie with me to his annual holiday party in 2017. And did you mention Chief Wojciechowski to Miss Adam? Yes, I um, actually introduced Mountie to her. I also told Ms. Adam that Mountie was an experienced police officer and likely going to be chief of police someday. And did you hear Ms. Adam and Chief Wojcicki discuss anything at, the, at this holiday party? Yes. Um, Officer Wojcicki described his car, a purple Ford police interceptor utility vehicle, to Ms. Adam. And Lieutenant Barman, what is the nature of your relationship with Ms. Adam? We are quite simply just acquaintances, despite um, our familial connections and despite the fact that it's almost impossible not to know an Adam due to the respect they have in this town. Um, me and Ms. Adams' relationship never really progressed beyond five-second conversations. And has Ms. Adam ever said anything about the police in your presence? Yes. Um, she once said that the police deserved to be knocked down a peg or two. Lieutenant Berman, where were you during the night of May 26, 2019? Well, I was called to the scene of the incident on Route 3. And what did you see when you first arrived? I immediately recognized Eli and Nancy Adam, who were handcuffed and sitting down, as well as who I now know to be Kai Cruz, handcuffed, yelling, screaming, and kicking at a bullhorn on the ground. And what happened immediately after you gathered these first impressions of the scene? Well, just as I immediately recognized Ms. Adam, Ms. Adam immediately recognized me, proceeding to say, you know who I am, uncuff me immediately and stop this insanity. And what was your response to her saying that? Well, quite frankly, my initial instinct was to let her go because of her influence, but I wanted to know what had actually happened first, as any reasonable police officer would want to do. And did you have any other interactions with Eli Adam that night? Yes, Ms. Adam claimed that Mountie was straddling the lane in front of her in a procedure known as a rolling roadblock. I do, however, doubt this actually occurred, as Chief Wojcicki had recently changed police procedure to not allow these rolling roadblocks. And what did you do immediately after Ms. Adams spoke to you of this alleged ruling roadblock? Well, doing my job, I investigated the scene of the incident. And what did you find, if anything? I didn't see any signs of collision between the Cruz and Adam cars, nor did I see any tire transfer or skid marks, which led me to believe that a sudden stop had not occurred at the scene of the incident. 
And Lieutenant Barman, were any charges filed against the plaintiffs? Well, Sergeant Cato began to file for harassment and simple assault. And did he finish filing for these arrests? No, I told Sergeant Cato to drop the charges against the plaintiffs and not even to file a narrative police report. And why did you make that decision? I am very aware of Ms. Adams' power and influence over the town of Metropolitan. And were there any other reasons why you let Ms. Adam and her fellow plaintiffs go? No, I believe all proper procedures were followed in the arrest of the plaintiffs and that Sergeant Cato acted as any reasonable experienced officer ought to. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Cross? Yes, Your Honor. Permission to proceed? You may proceed. Now, Lieutenant Barman, you were the lead officer on this case, right? Yes. And you actually made yourself the lead officer on this case, right? Yes, I did. And isn't it true that typically the arresting officer is made the lead officer? Yes, though it's not uncommon for someone else to make themselves the lead officer. Now, you had a working relationship with the late officer Wojciechowski, right? Yes, I did. And you described your dynamic with him as, quote, good cop, bad cop, correct? That was referring to the interrogatory technique, not to uh, my behavior or Mountie's behavior. But that is how you described your dynamic with him, right? Yes. And you two were both promoted to sergeant in the same ceremony, right? Yes, yes, we were. And in fact, he was the one who, in your words, quote, single-handedly promoted you to lieutenant, right? Well, I'd like to think it's my decades of experience that got me the promotion, but Mountie being chief of police was the one who made the final decision. So that's a yes to my question, Lieutenant Barman? Yes, it is. Now, Officer Wojciechowski also had what you called, quote, a temper, right? This temper was settled by the time of the incident, but in the distant past, he did have one. And uh, in the past, um, in 2010, isn't it true that Officer Wojciechowski was almost fired from the force? Yes. Objection to relevance. Um, I simply don't see how Chief Wojciechowski almost being fired uh, many, many years before this incident has anything to do with Sergeant Cato's probable cause on May 26, 2019, which is sort of what we're here today to discuss. Uh, Your Honor, if I may, the incident uh, which I am about to uh, bring up draws direct parallels to the events that occurred on the night of May 26, 2019, showing a uh, distinct lack of accident in Officer Wojciechowski's actions that night. Your Honor, if I may respond. You may. Uh, There's no physical evidence that corroborates any such parallel between this past incident and the incident that we're here tonight to discuss. Is there no skid marks at the scene of the incident, as Lieutenant Barman has already testified? Your Honor, if I may, um, I have not even brought up any skid marks or anything in this incident. Yeah, I was sort of wondering. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm really trying to dispute uh, opposing counsel's claim that there are any parallels between this incident and uh, the incident in the past. Well, why don't we see how this plays out for a moment, and then um, I'm going to welcome you to raise your objection again. Uh, Lieutenant Barman, I can ask the question again. Isn't it true that in 2010, Officer Wojciechowski was almost fired from the force? Yes. And uh, this was a result of a high-speed car chase, right? Indirectly, yes. Now, during this car chase, Officer Wojciechowski's higher-ups were about to call the chase off for being, quote, too dangerous, right? His fellow officers were about to call um, a part of the chase off due to crossing a dangerous road, a road which um, Chief Wojciechowski was already on the other side of. But you don't specifically say that. You say in your affidavit, you state that it was because the the chase was, quote, too dangerous, right? Yes, it was too dangerous due to the dangerous road. But Officer Wojciechowski said that he, quote, could not let this guy get away, right? Yes. And after he said this, he turned off all of the lights on the police car and slammed on his brakes, right? Uh, Your Honor, I would like to uh, make my relevance objection again. Okay. You better make it quickly because I think we lost your witness. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Uh, I uh, I believe that opposing counsel is trying to draw a parallel. Uh, But yet again, there was no uh, physical evidence 
of tire transfer marks or skid marks at the scene of the incident on May 26. And Lieutenant Barman, who was experienced as a crime scene reconstructionist, testified to this already. So any parallel drawn between the two incidents simply is not uh, relevant to Jay's case. Uh, Your Honor, if I may, uh, any evidence that was found at the scene uh, was found by, was examined by Lieutenant Barman himself, and we'll go into Lieutenant Barman's findings at the scene later on uh, to uh, further disprove their validity as well. So, uh, Counsel, what exactly is it you're trying to prove here? During this incident, um, Lieutenant uh, Officer Wojciechowski was in front of a car and he slammed dramatically on his brakes in front of this car and this led to the deaths of two people who were in the car behind him as he slammed on his brakes and the car slammed into his. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm failing to, to uh, I understand what you're trying to do, but I'm really having trouble finding a direct parallel here. So I'm going to, um, I'm just not gonna, I, we're done with this line of questioning. Yes, Your Honor, of course. Also, um, really quickly, I would just like to apologize um, for my computer difficulties. Absolutely, no problem, Lieutenant Barman. Now, you also had a working relationship with Officer Nico Reed, right? Yes, I was Miss Reed's superior officer. And in your words, Miss Reed, quote, benefited from her relationship with Officer Wojciechowski, right? Well, everybody benefited from their relationship with um, Chief Wojciechowski. But you say the word benefited in response to a specific incident where you were going to suspend Nico Reed for falsely calling in sick, right? Yes. But Officer Wojciechowski came in and told you not to suspend Nico Reed. So you didn't, right? I mean, it was one time everybody makes mistakes. Um, Miss Reed didn't get a short suspension and in return she was an amazing employee for the remainder of her tenure. So in that way, I actually thank Mountie for convincing me not to um, suspend her. Your Honor, move to strike the witness's answer as non-responsive. It was a simple yes or no question as to whether or not he didn't suspend Nico Reed as a result of Officer Wojciechowski's direct intervention. Your Honor, if I may, the witness was simply expanding on his answer. Yeah, I think it was a reasonable explanation. I'll allow it. Now, let's talk about the night of May 26, 2019. When you arrived at the scene, you saw Eli Adam, Nancy Adam, and Kai Cruz in handcuffs, right? Yes, yes, I did. So let's break that down a bit further. When you saw Nancy Adam, you said that she, quote, did not even seem to know where she was, right? Yes, yes, I did. Yet she was handcuffed, right? Yes, yes, she was. And you immediately recognized Eli Adam in handcuffs, right? Yes, yes, I did. And she, in your words, quote, immediately recognized you as well, right? Yes, yes, she did. And when Eli Adam saw you, she said, quote, you know who I am, uncuff me immediately and stop this insanity, right? Exactly. And in your affidavit, in direct response to this, you said, quote, I would have, right? My initial instinct was to let her go, but upon reflection, I realized that it would be more prudent to find out what had actually happened on the scene. So that's a yes to my question, Lieutenant Barman? Yes, that was my initial instinct. But even though you would have uncuffed Eli Adam, you didn't, right? No, no, I did not. And that's because you wanted Officer Wojciechowski to calm down more first, right? So he could explain to me what had occurred at, at the incident but you don't say why you wanted him to calm down more first, right? No, no, I did not. I figured it was implied. Uh, but you do mention that he, quote, still seemed pretty steamed, right? Yes. And that he was, quote, mumbling curses to no one in particular, right? Yes. Now, off, uh, now Lieutenant Barman, you examined the scene for any, uh, for any evidence that may have been found, right? Yes, yes, I did. And isn't it true that you found no uh, tire transfer marks or skid marks? No, no, I did not. And isn't it also true that you found no signs of minor collision between the Cruz and Adams car? Yes, that is true. Now, you didn't see anything leading up to the arrests of the plaintiffs, right? No, I was called after the fact. Uh, but you immediately believed what you were told by officers Wojciechowski and Officer Cato, right? They were eyewitnesses. It's what we're supposed to do. And you didn't speak with the plaintiffs at any point about what had happened before their arrests, right? Following proper procedure, we planned to, but um, we actually let them go before we could. Thank you. No further questions. 
redirect? No redirect, Your Honor. All right, so uh, we go 0 for 6 on redirects. Defense? Would you like us to take, oh, the defense rests. Thank you. Uh, uh, do our uh, attorneys need a couple minutes to put together their closings? Uh, yes, a brief recess would be preferable, Your Honor. A brief recess. Let us come back at 5.13, five minutes. Thank you, Your Honor. Hold on. Okay. Just um, I think we we still have closing arguments to go. When we're finished with that, I think what we'll do is we'll uh, dismiss our jurors to their uh, their breakout room, and the team members will stay and um, uh, consider making a practice schedule for this weekend. And so, please take five minutes uh, and relax. Sounds good.
Okay. Um, uh, are council ready for closings? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, just one other thing. I think um, when we're done with all this and the jury has come back, I'm sure that our uh, wit uh, people witnessing this trial will have a lot of questions for the people on the team. So maybe we'll do a little Q&A after. So um, time for closings. Vince? Permission to proceed, Your Honor? Please. May it please the court. Over the course of today's trial, conflicting narratives of the night of May 26th have emerged. The plaintiff has tried to tell you they're simply seeking justice. But a look closer at today's testimony will show the story they have created is one of chaos and bias. And a closer look at the defense's actions will show that on May 26th, Sergeant Cato, former officer Nico Reed, and Lieutenant Barman simply fulfilled their roles as reasonable and experienced police officers and citizens. Now, as you heard earlier today, the plaintiff must prove by a preponderance of the evidence that the arrests of the plaintiffs were wrongful. And a preponderance of the evidence is that this claim is more likely true than not. So let us go through the testimony you've heard today and see how the plaintiff has failed to meet its burden every step of the way. On May 26, Professor Cruz, Ms. Nancy Adam, and Ms. Eli Adam left a numerian protest. Eli Adam proceeded to tailgate the driver ahead of her and honk at him, all because the driver, Chief of Police Mounty Wojciechowski, was driving the speed limit. Ms. Adam then pulled over to the side of the road to confront him. When the driver, Chief Wojciechowski, got out of his car, three key things occurred. First, an irate Nancy Adam threw a tomato at Chief Wojciechowski. Secondly, an enraged Eli Adams shoved Chief Wojciechowski. And third, Kai Cruz yelled alarmingly into a bullhorn. Now, today's case is one of probable cause. Sergeant Cato had to have reason to believe that the assaults and harassment were purposely committed and were committed in his presence. Probable cause requires more than mere suspicion, but it does not require that the officer have evidence sufficient to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Sergeant Cato must have taken the actions of a reasonable officer to have probable cause, and that was exactly what he did. Now, as Sergeant Cato testified, a person commits simple assault if they cause, or purposely, knowingly, or recklessly cause, bodily injury to another in the presence of a police officer. So le let us discuss the two cases of simple assault that happened on the 26th. First, the arrest of Nancy Adam. As you heard from Sergeant Cato earlier this afternoon, Ms. Adam was arrested for simple assault. For this arrest to be legitimate, the arresting officer, Sergeant Cato, must have had probable cause to believe the assault was purposeful. Now, Professor Cruz thought Mama Bear looking out for Baby Bear at the time of the incident. Eli Adam herself even testified to using the phrase first blood after her mother threw the tomato. And Chief Wojcicki shouted, I'm hit, and stumbled to a knee as Sergeant Cato exited his vehicle. Sergeant Cato had reason to believe this was a purposeful assault. He did not have to see the projectile being thrown for it still to be in his presence. He needed reason to believe it happened in his presence. And reason and experience is exactly what Sergeant Cato has. Next, let's look at Eli Adams' arrest for simple assault. You heard Ms. Adams testify that she shoved Chief Ojehovsky. And you heard both Ms. Adam and Sergeant Cato say that Sergeant Cato was there as an unmedicated Ms. Adam shoved Chief Wojcicki and he tumbled to the ground directly afterwards. And it's important to note that simple assault does not need to cause bodily injury. Ms. Adam's accident just must have had purpose to cause bodily injury. Now, Ms. Adam testified to her own serious anger issues, which earned her a prior criminal record. Sergeant Cato saw Chief Wojcicki tumble to the ground because of Ms. Adams' actions, because of her shove. Now, Lieutenant Barman also testified to the fact that Eli Adam knew Chief Wojcicki, knew his highly distinctive vehicle, and knew he was a police officer prior to the night of May 26th. So let us make no mistake, Ms. Adam knew she was assaulting an officer of the law. 
Sergeant Cato also testified today that harassment is the illegal act of communication at extremely inconvenient hours in an alarming way or with offensive language. Sergeant Cato checked every box with his arrest of Professor Cruz. As you heard Professor Cruz testify, she used her bullhorn close to 11 p.m. on a dark road, certainly an inconvenient time to say the least. And Sergeant Cato testified under oath to hearing Professor Cruz offensively screaming into her bullhorn about establishment stooges and dirty cops. Because of the timing, language, and volume, Sergeant Cato had abundant reason to believe she committed harassment. Now, today's trial has also shown inconsistencies in the plaintiff's story. Professor Cruz and Ms. Adam are adamant that jokes about disabled police officers and making a police officer bleed were all to lighten the mood somehow. Eli Adam claims Chief Wojowski performed a rolling roadblock, but Lieutenant Barman testified that Chief Wojowski himself had just changed police procedure to not allow such a thing. And there were no tire transfer marks at the scene of the incident, as Lieutenant Barman, an experienced crime scene reconstructionist, testified today. Ms. Adam and Professor Cruz's story that they got out of their cars because of Chief Wojciechowski's alleged slamming of his brakes is not supported by physical evidence. The plaintiff's story simply doesn't add up. Now, this afternoon, the evidence has also shown that the plaintiffs have strong personal interests in Eli Adam winning today's case. So let's take a closer look at these biases. Professor Cruz is Eli Adams' best friend and is indebted to her for the next 28 years. And Professor Cruz and Mr. Pittsburgh, as numerians, depend upon the big fish Eli Adam, her donations, and her spokesmanship. Professor Cruz testified tonight that Mr. Pittsburgh would do anything for her. And Mr. Pittsburgh even testified that he wasn't originally named a witness on today's case. He only wanted to testify because of his clear bias against the police and reliance on Eli Adam. Eli Adam, who is his employer. Now, we can also see anti-police bias in Mr. Pitt Pittsburgh's tweet in which he said, and I quote, police officers should know what it's like to be persecuted themselves. And Professor Cruz has such severe night blindness that she prefers not to drive at night. She herself even testified that her condition is medically classified as night blindness. Now, Professor Cruz attempted to testify as a reliable eyewitness because she's outraged and dependent on Ms. Adam. And as Professor Cruz said on cross-examination tonight, she has thrown well-deserved insults at the police in the past. Clearly, the plaintiff's witnesses are biased to the point of utter unreliability. Simply put, injustice did not occur on the night of May 26th. Sergeant Cato believed he had probable cause. He believed that Nancy Adams' projectile and Eli Adams' shove were simple assaults, and that Professor Cruz's screaming was harassment. So Sergeant Cato did what any reasonable, experienced officer would do. He arrested them. Based on the evidence presented during the course of today's trial, we are confident that you will find no fault on behalf of the City of Metropolitan. Thank you for your time. Counsel for the plaintiff. Yes, Your Honor, permission to proceed? You may proceed. May it please the court, over the course of this afternoon's trial, you've heard testimony from six witnesses, and throughout the next few minutes, we'll go through the evidence together, which will show that the plaintiffs Eli Adam, Kai Cruz, and the late Nancy Adam were wrongfully arrested by the officers of the Metropolitan County Police Department, who rushed to judgment. At the beginning of today's proceedings, you heard from my co-counsel, Lily Peaty, who told you about the two aspects of this case that we as the plaintiff must prove. Firstly, that Jamie Cato arrested the plaintiffs, Eli Adam, Kai Cruz, and the late Nancy Adam. And secondly, that Jamie Cato did not have probable cause that the plaintiffs committed any offense that would result in an arrest, or that the offense did not occur in Cato's presence. Now keep in mind that you will base your decision in today's case 
on a preponderance of the evidence, meaning that both sides have attempted to tell a story, and it is up to you to decide which is more plausible. If you find that it is more likely than not that the rights of the plaintiffs were violated, then the city of Metropolitan must be held liable. Now, as we go through the evidence, you will notice that we, as the plaintiff, have laid out a set of facts that simply make sense. So let's talk about the first element of this case that we must prove, that Officer Cato arrested the plaintiffs. Everyone agrees to this, so let's move on to the second element, that Officer Cato did not have probable cause that the plaintiffs committed any offense resulting in an arrest, or that the offense did not occur in Cato's presence. Now, we as the plaintiff have shown you evidence that proves that we have upheld our burden. Eli Adam and Nancy Adam were both arrested for simple assault. Now, simple assault is defined as attempting to cause or purposely, knowingly, or recklessly causing bodily injury to another. The basis for Eli Adam's arrest was her shoving Officer Wojciechowski. But Eli Adams said on the stand today why she pushed Officer Wojciechowski. Eli Adams' mother was on the ground, unresponsive. Officer Wojciechowski had just tried to punch Eli in the face. Eli saw that he had a gun. He had just upset her mother. So Eli Adam pushed Officer Wojciechowski not to purposefully hurt him, but just so that he didn't upset her mother further. Eli Adam wasn't attempting to harm Officer Wojciechowski, not purposely or knowingly, and certainly not recklessly. And furthermore, there was no bodily injury. Officer Wojciechowski was not harmed in any way. What happened did not constitute simple assault, and, off and Officer Cato did not see any contact between the two occur. He said on the stand today, that he did not have a direct line of sight for this incident. Now, Nancy Adams' arrest for simple assault was based on the throwing of a tomato at Officer Wojciechowski. Now, Nancy Adams was, at the time of this incident, an 80-year-old woman suffering from dementia. You heard witnesses from the plaintiff and the defense say that Nancy Adams did not appear to be fully mentally present on the night of May 26, 2019. The defense would have you believe, based on the testimony of an admittedly impaired Nika Reed, that this 80-year-old woman got out of Eli Adams' car, saw Officer Wojciechowski, who had not yet identified himself as a police officer, and was so angered by the mere fact of his presence that she threw a tomato at him with all of her strength. Now, quite frankly, none of that makes any sense. So let's look at what actually happened. Nancy Adam, an 80-year-old woman, tripped while holding a tomato, and both her and this tomato fell forward. That was how the tomato landed on Officer Wojciechowski's chest. Nothing about this action was intentional or purposeful, and Officer Cato said on the stand this afternoon that he did not see anything launched or thrown at Officer Wojciechowski. And furthermore, this tomato also did not cause bodily harm. The conspiracy the defense is trying to sell simply doesn't add up. Now, let's move on to Kai Cruz, who was arrested for harassment. For Officer Jamie Cato to have grounds to arrest Professor Cruz for harassment, she must have communicated purposely in a manner to cause annoyance or harm and must have done this in Officer Cato's presence. Now, the reason for Kai Cruz's harassment arrest was because she was speaking in a miniature bullhorn for Officer Wojciechowski to leave Eli and Nancy alone. Kai Cruz showed concern for her best friend, and she got arrested for it. Now, as a member of law enforcement, Officer Wojciechowski swore his life to protect and to serve the community, and we respect that vow. But it was Officer Wojciechowski who initiated this whole incident by pulling over to the side of the road. Officer Wojciechowski, who had enough influence on the Metropolitan County Police Force to single-handedly change Lieutenant Tatum Barman's mind on suspending Nico Reed. This is the word of the man who Officer Jamie Cato based his arrests off of. Now, on the stand, 
Officer Cato told you that Nico Reed and Officer Wojciechowski told him that the plaintiffs assaulted Officer Wojciechowski. Nico Reed told you all that she and Officer Wojciechowski, quote, thought it was best that they told Officer Cato what they thought had happened. As a result of this, Officer Cato rushed to judgment and made these arrests based purely off of inaccurate observations and hot tempers. Now, on the stand today, Lieutenant Barman told you of his close working relationship with the late Officer Wojciechowski. The way he tells it, they had a good cop, bad cop dynamic. But Lieutenant Barman arrived on the scene on the night of May 26th, and Eli Adam pleaded with her to uncuff her and stop this insanity. And in his sworn affidavit, Lieutenant Barman said that he would have uncuffed Eli Adam. But he didn't, because he needed Officer Wojciechowski to calm down more first. Now, this is not an equal partnership. This is just another continuation in the pattern of influence that the late officer Wojciechowski had over the entirety of the Metropolitan County Police Department. If he wanted Nico Reed to stay on the force, it was done. If he wanted Eli Adam, Nancy Adam, and Kai Cruz arrested, all he had to do was tell Officer Cato what he needed to hear. Now, we as the plaintiff have shown you a series of facts of the events that occurred on May 26, 2019, that simply make sense. All three of the plaintiffs were wrongfully arrested. Kai Cruz only used her miniature bullhorn to call for help, and the bodily injury that the defense claims Eli and Nancy Adam inflicted simply didn't occur. There was no bodily injury, and Officer Cato rushed to judgment in his arrests of the plaintiffs. There is no choice but to find in favor of Eli Adam, Kai Cruz, and the late Nancy Adam. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. So um, before we dismiss the jury, um, I guess I should read the charges uh, so you know what you're discussing. So there are two charges that we're looking at. The first one was, did the city of Metropolitan officer Jamie Cato arrest the plaintiffs? And that shouldn't take you too long to deliberate about. And the second question, did the city of Metropolitan officer Jamie Cato have probable cause to believe the plaintiffs had committed the offense of simple assault or, uh, or harassment? So those are your charges. Um, Ms. Tomset, is there a breakout room set up? Yep, I'm opening it now. Okay, and how about 10 minutes? Um, I've got 531, let's say 540, and see if uh, somebody if you can come back and let us know what you decided. And if you uh, need help, you can use that ask, ask for help feature in the breakout room. Just like in a real case. Well, I thought that went very well, that you guys were back in form. Yeah, I think my dad's in the car. Dad, are you in the car? Anyway, um, why don't we try to Wait. set up a break? Sorry, I think my grandma is still in it because she doesn't know how to get into the breakout room, so I'm gonna call them. Okay. So let's let's try to put together a, a practice schedule for this weekend. I know practices will be pretty short. Did y'all see me after Frankie said bean pushers or whatever? Just like yes. trying not to like ten pushers <laughs> made me laugh so hard. Like I literally you could see me just go like you see me go like <laughs> he keeps laughing, and then I kept laughing. Miss Tomset, you're on mute. Mr. Wilson, how did you feel the power coursing through your body when you got to tell that to someone else? <laughs> <laughs> like, 
it's probably the best thing that's ever happened since this whole. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting all emotional. <laughs> Um, could, could you guys well, my brother Tom said when I, I was going? The dark weather thing. Yeah, oh, I know, and you did fine. I told you to do it. Thank you for doing it. I think I think we could like try to craft it to 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 work better if you wanted, but I don't know. Also, I should yeah, not also, yeah like is it your question on the dark weather thing that doesn't relate to Mounty's temper at all? So I'm not really sure where it's coming from. Well, anyway, uh, that is well, we can figure that out. Too early. I take credit. You did. I you up. definitely I misheard did. Izzy and I thought she said something about like slam me on the brakes. And then I was like, ah. So I didn't get to give my wonderful speech that I totally remembered to write. I know. But um, I'm so sorry that you didn't get to give your speech. speech okay. What was the speech I told you to write? For if the Starkweather thing gets mentioned, I'm supposed to have a, like, a prepared statement where I go, yes. yeah, but not really, but also, yeah, but also kind of, no. Okay. So, um, so according to the doodle, um, everyone apart from Anya, but that makes sense, is available from 10 until 12.30, and then 3.30 to 5.30 tomorrow. It doesn't matter. Today's Friday. It don't feel like a Friday. It feels like a Monday, because the junior thesis is due on the actual Monday. Life oh God. just... Okay. Oh, okay. Laura, Lily, do you, you have a question? Thesis for me? Thank yeah, you. I'm no longer available after 3.30. So like the whole afternoon. Okay. Saturday, so then let's just do 10 or whatever it's called. Yeah, let's just do 10. Yeah, 10 would be better for me because then I'll be awake early. Is that tomorrow? That is tomorrow, yes. Uh, I'm not you sure. Said, you said Sorry. you were available until... I have no idea. Always, I have no idea check. Um, what time I'm supposed to start training. Um, so okay. I don't think it's this week, but it might be. All but, right. So, so how about this? Yeah. We'll say ten o'clock. Yeah. If for some reason people are no longer available or whatever, just let somebody know, mm -hmm. and we'll figure it out. Okay. Carol, Carolina, were you successful? <laughs> well, I I called them and I was like, "What's going on?" And then my grandpa was like. She's trying to get on to her sister's basketball game and it's not working. Ah. Apparently they had the mock trial thing open and then also trying to get onto the basketball game got on the iPad. And then she got confused. So I just told her that I would answer her questions later. That sounds good. <laughs> oh. Did you guys have any is there any comments? I mean, I guess we're doing notes. Ten o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> I mean, I can I can start and, doing notes if wait, you want. Was for the lab, are we supposed to submit the part with just just Prim's algorithm? You can. Next? We can't. Oh, oh, I was I was. You hoping can. That. I said you can. Wait, we don't have to though. Okay. You do I not thought we had to. to like submit Prim's algorithm, and then we were going to get Crush Girl's algorithm. No. Great. That makes my life easier. Yeah, you're oh, good. Well. Imagine being good at like STEM. Could not be me. <laughs> this is literally we're taking. Um, a whole bunch of points, and then we're just adding lines between them. That's all it is. I don't know what that is. That's accurate. Dot, Literally, dot, draw dot. Line. So horrible. Draw lines. Are you doing slope them. fields? I yeah. love. <laughs> no, we're yeah. doing. It's like computer, computer science. Oh. It's computer science. Josh is taking AP Calc, ABVC. Okay, Olivia. Sorry, you guys. I'm just in AB. You're just taking so AP Calc, AB. <laughs> God, just kidding. I'm only taking pre-calc honors. I don't know. I can't talk. <laughs> um. Anyway, I can I can start giving notes now if folks want them. No, you don't want if, them. If, if we ever do us direct, don't. No, wait, Frankie. It, during your cross, if you want to like mess up the other lawyer, use the word bean pusher. <laughs> like to mess pusher. them up. You bean count bean. it's bean counters and pen pushes. Gotta get them right. Oh <laughs> yes, Lily, today I don't know if you noticed that you said this. Counters. Oh my gosh, Lily. Oh my I don't know if you noticed that you said this, but you said um no redirect at your time. <laughs> twice. <laughs> said twice. Said it twice. I said this twice. Yes. <laughs> 
It was great. <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> I didn't notice it at all. <laughs> really, because um, you said it Tom, twice. Tom said, I know that Olivia and I need to cut down the direct. I know. I didn't know. I don't know how that happened. It's because other Olivia kept objecting, but I kept winning. What are you talking about? Didn't I do like one or two objections? Yeah. Did you objection about it for like so five objections. minutes? <laughs> That was what the did longest I objection battle I've ever oh, seen. Oh, yeah, but that was so fun. I didn't write down that. Okay, but also, can we talk about the fact that I made no objections on the directs that I, of the people that I crossed? I thought that was very powerful of me. Also, they were good directs. <laughs> Laura, are you okay? Is it a power play? Yes, it is a power play. When did we add in those last cross questions for my cross? Uh, which <laughs> ones? <laughs> the ones about me knowing if Mountie ever had injuries. Uh, I've been yeah. telling her to add those questions for a while now. So, and I did. Finally did. Okay, please, during Olivia's direct, if you have time, mention the stipulation that says that the mask was broken on the ground. I love that. Oh my god, I don't have time in Olivia's direct. I You're know, but you this. do. Somehow. I was yeah, trying to me. and then Evie was like 30 seconds, and I was like, ah, <laughs> Wow, but I literally got so caught off guard by Izzy's questions about like the the bottle injury, and I was like, "No, that was great, Laura. You responded well. Like, I I, I don't know, maybe he didn't tell me." And I was yeah, I that, mm -hmm. that and I was like, mm -hmm, "That's what I thought you said." <laughs> Izzy was really Jack? Like, I um the only reason I hate asking the thing about the generally whatever because then you can just kind of like squirm out of it but you said it and which is why I asked it again but just like don't say that wait, wait yeah because I think I was being too affirmative at times but um no what, you're fine what are you you're talking not. about you can never be too affirmative Jack we need to have yes. power uh, also yes yeah, there's Jack. a lot to process there. Jack. Actually, like, act like, like, Tucker Carlson when, like, he finds out that, like, I don't know that, like, gay marriage is a thing. Oh, oh Loki! It's taking over your homes now. They're in complete control of our schools. The water. Anyways, the I'm not even gonna lie, Laura. I felt so powerful doing that cross. I really did. I that was like, uh, I just, I just liked it. But Laura, you also did very well. Yeah, I just yeah. liked. It. I just thought it was neat. Laura's just slightly pissed off that nobody told her that these were questions. That's <laughs> yeah, like, but, but also, Laura, they don't tell you the questions before they ask you. Are you telling <laughs> a her real trial? I know. Sure. I was prepared for Izzy's question. Even for one of the questions, I answered the next question in the first question answer because I knew it was coming. <laughs> Laura, you have a right to get those depositions in your office in Philadelphia right now if you want. What? No one gets your. I reference. really like. I got his power <laughs> during Frankie's cross. Worry, I got his we cut Frankie off. off, guys. We cut Frankie off. Frankie no, I was just gonna say that, like one, I at some point, like when we were going, it was just like one annoying opponent, like at some at some level in our uh, in our string of victory. But not on our team. <laughs> and not on our team. They uh, they asked me that right. question. I didn't see it coming either. So um. That's so yeah. Mean. And that's why I liked it, and I've held also, on to it ever since. You can you can say yes. You're like, yeah, he tumbled to the ground. I assumed he was. No, I, I just said that he didn't have any long lasting injuries yeah. that I was aware of. That was, that's, fine too. that's that's I good. That. But frankly, that. like, if you had uh, well, which you didn't this time, if you had extra time on the Kato frankly, cross, no, that's Frankie. <laughs> You know, honestly, I felt so powerful doing Frankie's cross until he said pen pushers, and then I just like the entire <laughs> love. Like, I could tell you were just like, okay, maybe I wasn't paying that much attention to Frankie's cross, but I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. Yeah. So you just I was just laughing for no reason, and then I woke up and I was like, sorry, I'm sorry, and then I had to keep. Well, going. what was amazing about it was that he said that, and then two sentences later, he was like. Well, that's just how we get things done. And I was like, Sorry, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And then I had to start thinking about my cats dying in order for me to calm down. Oh, okay. something in bean counting. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. <laughs> what? Yeah. Guys, I, I had to- I officially lost Izzy. <laughs> I was... <laughs> Wait, what about the jury? They're still in the breakout room and it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. When, it's a jury when we bring them back, we have to. Wait, the, the yeah, jury is coming back in 20 seconds. 
Oh, oh, I okay. had to turn down the humor because my fan is going faster through the whole thing than the one working windmill left in Texas. But uh, anyway, <laughs> that's, that's happening five more seconds <laughs> until they're back. Shush. No. Put a sock in it, Tucker Carlson. He wasn't on last night, so I didn't get any humor. Maybe they're coming back. Oh, everybody left. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hello. Good afternoon. How was your deliberating? Do you have a verdict for us? We have verdict, but but interestingly, it's Madame Slotkin, um, who somehow got named four person here only because I opened my mouth first. Remind <laughs> me not to do that. Um, we had several questions where we would have liked to gone back and ask the judge for a clarification. Um, because um, Judge Wilson, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're not allowed to write notes or make notes in courts in New Jersey. Um, however, I am so not auditory, I know, language teacher, um, that I did write down or I scribbled down your charge to the jury. And so the question becomes, did I write it down correctly? Did I write it down completely? And we would have liked to have gone back and say, wait, can you there, say I, that to us again? Well, you know that there's a feature on uh, Breakout where you can actually ring for somebody to come and help you. Yes, but we didn't know in this context whether we were allowed to do oh, that. Oh, yeah. 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 We, when I was on a uh, trial, we did that. Um, what is your question? Um, the, the second charge was, did Cato have probable cause that they had committed simple assault? It, there was um, two simple assaults in one harassment case. So were the right? Were we sup so? Did we need to decide those three separately, or are we deciding that because you presented it as two questions? Yeah, yeah you would actually uh, decide them separately. But well, we didn't discuss that separately. That, okay, that's I mean, that's fine. Okay, so, so um, it was unanimous. Um, we find in the first charge, did uh, Officer Cato arrest? Sorry, I wrote this down wrong. Arrest the three other people in the other car. Um, and the answer is yes, um, he did. That one was easy. Um, all right, now make, let me make sure I don't do a double, double negative. Did Officer Cato have probable cause that they had committed simple assault? And we found that no, he did not. He did not. Okay. You want to pull the jury? Because I was not the only one on this. You said unanimous. So. It was unanimous. Okay. Um, except for uh, Olivia's mom, who somehow couldn't come off her uh, mute. Okay. But anyway. So I'll, I'll tell you uh, two things. We'll, we'll open it up for, for questions in a moment. But we actually were in a case um, where the other side claimed that an arrest had not taken place. That was interesting. We felt really good after we heard the <laughs> opening. All right, so we'll open it up for uh, if you guys have any questions or comments for our students. You guys can all put your microphones on. And remind me never to go up against any of you, ever. <laughs> Unless it's in French where I can dominate. <laughs> Yeah, especially those of us that don't take French. <laughs> Questions? In English. Yes. Preferably. <laughs> Mr. Dubitsky, you really look like you want to ask a question. <laughs> no, I, I, I just want to actually... Uh, dish out lots and lots of compliments I yeah. was blown away. okay yeah. good really? yeah i don't have questions other than you know like how do you guys do this this is amazing yeah. seriously yeah. it was it was amazing i was so happy to be able to you know just watch and and try to pay close attention there's so much there's so much detail um 
And it's it's fascinating. It was really, really, really great. First of all, I can't even say the name Officer Woja wa 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 wa. We I can't even say that. Tosky. It took a lot of and a lot of time. Yeah, I, I want to know tell how you, do you do that? <laughs> that. I struggled a lot with that in particular. I was the teammate that um needed the most work maybe in that department. And it took a lot of repetition. Um, you know, some people were running direct for openings, but I just practiced saying the name for about a week and then, you know, and eventually figured itself out a little bit. We they did that on purpose. Impressive. And the I ones who wrote the, that. set it up. You know, I don't want to use that as a lone example of, uh, of, of brilliance, but just getting that nailed down as you all did. If you were to look at our scripts, amazing. if you were to look at our scripts, you'd see that it was spout out in phonetics. Yeah. <laughs> So that's all. I don't have any questions other than like one. How did you get that name nailed down? And now I know phonetic spelling and a lot of practice and just yeah. how incredible like for all all of it, all of it, like all sides, everything, even the acting is great. Everything. So, so phenomenal. That's, that, that's all I have. No questions. Just wow. Yeah. Ditto. Yeah. You guys were amazing. I, can we watch the. um? The uh, finals, the county finals? Regional. I mean, the oh. regional, sorry. Yeah. The regional finals. Yeah. No, Can we? we can't watch not. that. Bummer. No. Well, Agreed. thank you for you know offering this opportunity because it was so much, not, you know, short of being in the Newark uh, courthouse, this was awesome. Really great. You guys are r really phenomenal, truly, really. Yeah. I'm yeah. blown away, just completely blown away. Because not only have you, quote, memorized your parts or practiced it, but so much of the the challenges and things are off the top of your head. You have right. to be really listening and, and doing what lawyers do, um, you know, and really listening and trying to get at an argument or dismiss an argument. It's that part of thinking on your feet is yeah. is exceptional, just exceptional. Yeah. Yeah, how nimble you have to be mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, quickly focus your, you know, your argument in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. just amazing. Mm -hmm. I could never do it, and I'm blown away by all of you. Seriously. Mm -hmm. And the coaches, you guys are the best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You spent more time with our kids than we have this semester, and, and we live with them in lockdown, so that's really something. Oh, uh, don't think we're not going to call in a favor on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can call in multiple favors for that. Seriously. I think I think you're going to win. I, th I can't imagine anyone being yeah. better than you. I really yeah. can't. Yeah. You're clear. Mm -hmm. You are you know, your argument was really clear. Um, you know, this is my fourth year listening to mock trials, and I thought this was really the, um, I thought it was the best. I really thought you got, your argument was just really well developed. Both, both sides yeah. were great. I was never sort of scratching my head and nope. wondering where something was going or. Oh, the judge um, was a couple of times. <laughs> so i thought it was phenomenal do you Definitely. have any questions for us about our deliberations that would help you mm, tweak something actually that is a great question it is a great question you, this is you know you you have a fresh set of eyes and a fresh set of ears and we haven't had that for a really really long time Ooh, okay uh jury people uh my question is with the whole entire like did eli adams shove cause bodily injury did it need to cause bodily injury what were your thoughts on that in your deliberations i think it was pretty unanimous that he's a big guy and we really struggle to believe that she would have done any harm to him and it seemed like more of him trying to build an excuse and the comeback than anything else. Also, it was it was perfectly reasonable to me that she acted to protect her mother. I mean, that was just so I could I could see that in my mind's eye in a way that 
when he tried to talk around it, I thought, no, her mother's there, for God's sakes. Of course he's, and then suddenly he flashes a gun. I mean, we all sort of thought, nah, he's, you know, he's pulling his weight, literally. Yeah, it, it was also um, made us question the one drink all night argument, which might not be in his favor to bring up. Right. Right. If if her shove could knock him over, yeah, it was more than one drink. Yeah, more exactly. than one. He's a big guy. More. And yeah, he shouldn't have been drink six. and he shouldn't have been driving then. That's right. right, exactly. So his argument of he was driving carefully, mm, it made us question that. Yeah. Sketchy. Mm -hmm. The one that one comment I would make just uh, because this is over Zoom and that I think, and I, I, I could be wrong about this, coaches. I have no idea. But, but that the, I think you could, if there's one thing, I think the acting could, like, bump up one notch. Because, you know, it's over Zoom. So, you know, I think mm -hmm. facial expressions maybe could be a little stronger. Like, to look a little more engaged, I think, would be helpful. Because some, sometimes people were looking a little flat. Mm. Um, I thought, and I just think like when you're talking to your witnesses to try to look like you're really talking to your witnesses, mm. you know, nod the head a little, um, you know, move your body a little, like look more. A little more animated? Yes. I think, I think a little more animation would, would be good. I don't know. Do you guys yeah. feel the same way? My yeah, yeah. Fellow, uh... Yeah. I was terrified of you, Frankie. Just want you to know that. There's no way I want to go up against Officer Frankie. Yeah. No way. He doesn't realize it yet, but he he's going to be an officer for uh, however long he does mock trial. Absolutely. Oh, Frankie, nice. you mean Sergeant Jamie Cato. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. I've heard it a lot. That, that was, was really lot. good. Yeah, I would just try to look. I yeah, that's a good look point. look like you're having more fun, but that's a piece of it too. It's like, you know, look like you're really in it, you know, like you're really boom, 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 as opposed to like a little flat. Like, a, I don't know That's if a really having good point. fun yeah. is, is part of it, but if that fun's the wrong word. I think engaged. Yeah. I think you talk your parts. Yeah. Act them also. Does that, is that fair? Yes, exactly. Because you have all the lines. I mean, and, right. and, if, and, it, and they sound very legit when you're delivering them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but maybe you can sort of like embody them a little bit as you're delivering them. So a little animation, maybe. Because I know yeah. I from having seen it in court. I know in court, you know, like you're using your hands yeah. and you're walking up towards the, you know, the um, the jury box. And so because you don't have any of that, I think mm -hmm. your face needs to do more work. Yeah. But, yeah, it's not just about the words. Um, yeah, the delivery is, is key. That was really right. fun. It was amazing the to two, watch. It, the hours recorded. flew by. Yeah. It flew by. Like, it just flew by. Yeah. Because yeah. you were so good. I mean, that's yeah. how it flew by. Yeah. I think we need to figure out how to get this on Netflix, clearly. <laughs> the next thing. Absolutely. Mock, Mock trial. trial. That's right. <laughs> It's going, to be, it's going to be big. Oh, congratulations. Really. I'm just so blown away by your talent and your preparation. Yeah, a lot of work. Yep. Yep. No wonder you didn't do your French homework. Oh, my God. <laughs> really amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time and your comments. And I uh, hope we will have some good results for you on Tuesday. <laughs> Yay! So, what time do you go? When do you find out which side goes? Um, we start at twelve thirty, so we'll find out at 12 about twelve twenty-five. <laughs> wow! All right. Well, you're all super prepared. So. I was just going to say the same thing. Both sides are totally rocking, so it's going to be great. Wow! Okay. All right. Thank you guys so right, much. Amazing. Bye bye. bye. Happy weekend. Bye. Happy weekend. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. All right, we'll...
See you guys at 10 o'clock tomorrow. All right. Very good. Okay. Oh, boy. Bye. Bye. I'm going to go help my mom figure out how to leave and go meet. Bye, guys.